Hello, and welcome to an EDB special report on the docking of the SCADI module extension to Titan Station. Four hours and 21 minutes after launch, the SCADI module extension made its main rendezvous burn, burning 90 meters per second of delta V at around 6 kilometers away from the station in order to match velocities with the station. That was meant to be its last automated function. After that, it turned on its lights so that the Kerbinauts on board the station could take control. And Jeb began by making a few burns to bring it closer to the station into the two kilometer safe zone, which it entered at four hours and 38 minutes after launch. And so here we see a simulated view, of course, of the module approaching the station. And you can see the station uh, in the distance there. There were no cameras on board the Scotty module extension and the station camera was on the opposite side of the station and obstructed from view of the module. This is the final main burst towards the station. After this, all maneuvers were conducted with RCS rather than the one kilonewton thrusters that had brought the module to this point so far. From here on, the process was more cautious than usual as they brought it very slowly towards the station. This video was somewhat late in being released and that is for numerous reasons. One of them is simply the long transit between the two kilometer safe zone entry and the ultimate docking. And another reason is the difficulty in simulating what actually happened due to the precision necessary. So here the module is on final approach and that means that uh, no major adjustments to its course are intended and in fact it should at this point be able to coast directly to the docking port. This turned out not to be how things actually happened though, as we will soon see. So this is still the coast phase and it is quite lined up with the docking port. Uh, the angle of this uh, simulated view might not be indicative of that, but it is in fact uh, precisely in line with the docking port at this point. And, and the entire coast phase lasted uh, more than 20 minutes. It was Jebediah Kerman in control of the Sky Module Extension, of course, and while he didn't have any camera views, he did have a sophisticated docking alignment unit. Uh, to rely upon in order to ensure that the module was safely on its way to the docking port. And Bill and Bob Kerman were of course preparing for their ultimate EVA, uh, studying up on the reactor and making sure that they knew how to activate it properly. So they were still busy with that, of course ready to help Jeb at a moment's notice should the need arise. They of course are in the science lab and on the opposite side of the station from Jeb and the controls. Uh, they have been there since the first EVA at Titan Station. So they would not have any practical ability to take control for any reason, but certainly they have a better view of the, of the reactor unit approaching. As we see, this is uh, video in in real speed. With this new extension, Titan Station uh, still has not passed uh, one billion dollar mark in terms of uh, its intrinsic cost. However, of course, its combined launch cost, the entire cost taken to construct it, including the cost of the launchers, has uh, well exceeded one billion dollars. Um, altogether, we are approaching four billion dollars for the development of the station and that is expected to increase quite dramatically as though there's some concern here that our simulation software won't be able to bring us such views of the station if we add too much to it 
and uh, even right now our simulation software is struggling to uh, give us a nice render of what actually occurred as the as the sky module extension docked at the station. So here is sky module extension uh, lighting up the docking port with its forward its green forward illuminator mark twos. And we'll just watch this coast phase as uh, as it didn't uh, turn out quite as intended. If you recall, the sky module extension was supposed to uh, remove itself from automated mode and go into into manual control mode. At that point, the Telemachus antenna uh, deactivated and no longer had the smart ASS system up. However, what we uh, were not aware of was that the internal internal guidance on the sky module extension had not switched away from smart ASS to uh, simple SAS and so uh, smart ASS was still pointing the module directly at the docking port uh, using its uh, targeting function and that was not necessary the, the module had been lined up with the docking port precisely well ahead and so that that function should have been turned off and was not and so we'll see the net effect of that and this is what uh, took a long time to simulate accurately based on the data uh, we had to get uh, data from Jeb's uh, docking computer in order to piece it all together the raw telemetry data from the from the Scotty module extension itself was not sufficient because that's mainly for uh, launch and uh, that does not need to be quite as accurate as the docking computer data. So here the module is uh, well within uh, 20 meters now. And the trouble with uh, keeping the smart ASS system in targeting mode is that uh, even a minor variation or perceived variation uh, leads it to act quite wildly. We must emphasize that uh, that uh, regardless of what you uh, see in this video coming up here, there was no danger to the to the crew of the station or the station itself, uh, and nor to Earth. By the way, the the module could have been boosted away immediately if uh, Jeb saw fit to do so. You can see the RCS ports firing, slowing it down to uh, 0.05 meters per second. And here things start to go wrong here. Clearly uh, the module is uh, attempting to align itself for, for some reason with an uh, unknown target. The deviation from the docking port does not seem to warrant this kind of reaction from the sky module extension, but in any case, uh, Jeb to control right away. You can see him firing the RCS ports. Uh, the SAS, system, uh, sorry, the smart ASS system was still uh, turning it in in an odd fashion, but uh, Jeb was able to boost it away so he is simply attempting to push it away from the station uh, this orientation was the most dangerous point here uh, there was some concern here because now the solid boosters on the on the module itself would not be aligned quite properly it uh, could smash into the solar panels of the station but the smart ASS system was deactivated finally and uh, now Jeb was able to bring it to a holding position uh, as you can see right there 
slightly to the, we'll call it to the right of the docking port based just on our view. Actually, technically, that should be referred to as the L1 truss side of the, of the station. So here it is in its holding position and slowly being repositioned for a second attempt at the docking port. The module extensions radiator panels look to be a lot closer to the solar panels of the station than they actually are in this view, by the way. Uh, they were not that close. So here's the repositioning, simply uh, bringing it uh, back to the station axis and uh, of course backing it away a little bit so that uh, any, any variations away from the station axis can be worked out well ahead of its approach to the docking port. Jeb's still in control here of course. And here you can see the final lineup. And now the approach. This entire process of course took a lot longer than this video might suggest as, uh, as the crew and uh, mission control made sure to be very careful about uh, all the procedures. Again we have to emphasize the reactor unit is disabled at this point as is the antimatter containment unit. Now within 5 meters, the module extension approaching the Scotty module and the science lab there, uh, preparing to extend it by 8 meters in length. This is not uh, 8 meters of habitation area, of course, as the Kerbals would not be able to go inside any portion of this module. It is more of an extension to the scientific functions of the station and perhaps the future exploration functions, as we see the module enter into the 2 meter range of the docking port here. Now entering the 1 meter range. and a final burst of RCS thrust as Jeb slows it down for final contact. And there it is, the extension successfully docked to the Scotty module. The Scotty module now bathed in green light as the Curiosity module is in midnight blue and white. We hope you enjoyed watching this special report on the docking of this new addition to Titan Station. And uh, I'm sure we all wish the Kerbals the best of luck in activating this on uh, late Friday, early Saturday. And uh, we'll be watching their EVA as well. Uh, for that, there will be uh, external camera robots giving us good views of what the Kerbals are doing. Uh, those were not available for this particular mission. And so uh, thank you for watching, and with that, the EDB is signing off.